Good day, my friends, and welcome. Today, we will be learning about one of the mightiest of animals, the dragon. Now, I'm not talking about the fairy tale dragons we read about in storybooks. I'm talking about real dragons. That's right, dragons are real. And we typically think of them as mythical creatures, but historically, the word dragon was used to refer to real animals. Essentially, many reptiles could be considered a dragon. It could be used for lizards, crocodilians, flying and swimming reptiles, and even dinosaurs. Yes, even dinosaurs would qualify as dragons. Think about it. If you saw a triceratops in medieval times, you probably would have called it a dragon. So why don't we hear accounts of encounters with dinosaurs from medieval times? That's because the word dinosaur hadn't been invented yet. It's a brand new word. That word was invented in 1841 by Sir Richard Owen. Did you know that dinosaurs were also on Noah's Ark? The Bible is clear that at least two of every kind of air-breathing, land-dependent animal would have been preserved on the Ark built by Noah. Dinosaurs are land animals, after all, so they would have been included. That means that some dinosaurs survived the flood and lived alongside people for centuries afterward. Now, eventually, most of the dinosaurs went extinct, but for centuries, people have recorded encounters with amazing reptiles that they called dragons. We also see carvings and paintings from throughout history that depict these animals. And many of these descriptions and depictions resemble what we call dinosaurs today. Now, one of my favorite dinosaurs, the Baryonyx, definitely looks like a dragon. This dinosaur had a long and thin snout like crocodiles and gharials. Its arms were long for its size, and it had three fingers on each hand. Each of this dinosaur's fingers had a curved claw on the end that was made of bone. The inner finger of this dinosaur had a much larger claw on it than the other two. That's actually where it gets its name, Baryonyx, which means heavy claw. The large third claw can be up to one foot long along the upper edge, and it was covered in a sheath of keratin. This made the claw even longer. These large claws would have helped the animal catch and hold on to its prey more easily and defend itself from larger predators. Now, Baryonyx was a big animal. It could reach lengths of up to 30 feet. That's as long as a three-story building is tall, or about from here to here. And it stood about eight to nine feet tall. That's about as tall as an adult male ostrich. Now run your tongue along your teeth. They're pretty flat, right? Baryonyx's teeth were round and perfectly shaped for grasping and holding on to slippery fish. Just like this Spinosaurus tooth I have here, only a little smaller. Because of their teeth and the shape of the animal's snout, it is thought that Baryonyx was primarily a piscivore. This simply means fish eater. The Baryonyx is a member of the Spinosaur kind. This group includes dinosaurs such as Suchomimus, Irritator, and of course, the Spinosaurus. Like Baryonyx, all Spinosaurs are characterized by having long and slender snouts, round conical teeth, and large arms with sharp curved claws. But even within this group, there's a lot of diversity. This is because we have an amazing and creative God. He created these animals with a tough, scaly skin that covers their bodies, like alligators and crocodiles. From the tips of their nose to the ends of their tails, and from their muscular chest to their nimble feet, these dragons were protected. You know, their scaly skin is kind of like armor. Can you imagine being covered in armor from head to toe all the time? The Grimwald is here to remind us that when we repent of our sins, and believe that Jesus is our savior, he gives us a suit of armor too. In Ephesians 6, verse 11, the apostle Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against the schemes of the devil. Today, we're learning about the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes of peace. A breastplate covers you from your neck to your waist and protects your heart, your lungs, and other important organs. In a similar way, righteousness protects us from a life of sin. Now, what word do you see in righteousness? That's right, when we become part of his kingdom, Jesus gives us his righteousness and helps us to do what is right. 
We need to strive to do what's right, no matter what, even when it's hard. And just like shoes protect our feet, the gospel protects us from an eternity of separation from God. Now let's go out and do what's right in God's sight.